In this example, we talk primarily about a class called Arrays from the java.util package, which contains lots of static methods for performing some common array manipulations. So what we're going to do is walk our way through main here, and I've actually already gone and run the program and pasted its output into a document so that we can look at the output as we go through the source code. So you can see here in line 10 that we started by declaring a double array and the elements in this array are not in sorted order. At line 11, we use the arrays method sort to sort the elements of the double array into ascending order. Then at lines 12 through 15, we display those values to show you that the array was indeed sorted. So if I stop there for a moment and take a look at the first piece of output, you can see indeed that the elements were sorted into ascending order. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation for a moment for the class arrays and specifically go to the list of methods within this class. The first thing you'll notice is that all of the methods are static and one of the other things that you'll notice is that there are often many overloads for a given method. So let me scroll down here to the S's and get to sort. And you can see for sort that you can sort a byte array. You can sort a byte array within a specific range of indices. You can sort a character array. Same thing with the indices as well. And as I scroll down here, you can see there's a version for a double array, which is the one we're using. And there's also versions for float arrays and int arrays and long arrays and arrays of objects as well. Uh, also short and then you also see this version with this generic name T and this is um, actually what's known as a generic method and it's actually possible to sort an array of any type at all provided that you specify how to compare elements of that type. So there's lots of different sorting capabilities built into this arrays class and just one of them is the sort method for an, an array of type double which we just demonstrated to you. Now another common thing you need to do with an array is fill its uh, elements with a particular value and for that purpose we have the arrays method fill and once again that method is overloaded for lots of different types. In this case we're doing an integer array which has 10 elements in it and basically what happens here is that the fill method is going to fill every element of the specified array with the value that you provide. So the uh, integer array will be filled with the value 7 repeatedly and to demonstrate that it was filled we call our own method display array which is going to display the elements of the array you specify preceded by the name that you specify or the description string that you specify. To do that we display the description first and then loop through the elements of the array to show their values. So going back up to main here just to show you what the filled array looks like you can see here that we filled the 10 element array with 7s. Next we declare a couple of additional arrays the integer array called int array with the values 1 through 6 and another integer array called int array copy which is going to have the same number of elements as the int array. So we're creating this array dynamically and using int array dot length which is going to be 6 to figure out how many elements should be in the array uh, called int array copy. Now at line 25 we demonstrate a method of class system called array copy. This is the most efficient way to copy the elements of one array into another in Java. The system class's array copy method takes five arguments where the first argument is the source array from which values will be copied. The second argument is the starting index number in the source array from which to begin copying values. The third argument is the destination array in which we will start placing the values and the fourth argument is the index number in that array where those values should start being placed. And then finally the last argument is the number of elements to copy from the source array into the destination array. So basically in line 25 we're saying to copy all of the elements of int array 
into interray copy. And to prove that it worked, we then go ahead and display both arrays using our display array method. So let's look at the output and you can see that interray, which was initialized to one through six, was then copied into interray copy, which now contains one through six. Now, some other common things that you may want to do with arrays is determine whether they contain the same values. And for that purpose, we have the arrays method equals, which once again is overloaded multiple times in the class arrays. In this case, we're comparing the contents of two int arrays, one called in array and one call, called in array copy. And this is going to return a Boolean value indicating whether or not they contain the same set of values. If indeed they do, that will be true. And in the case of these two arrays, they do indeed contain the same values as we just looked at in the output window. So we will display a um, string of information indicating that they are equal. And if you take a look at the output here, you can see that indeed the two arrays are equal. Now, to prove that it returns false when the arrays are not equal, we use two different int arrays that have different sets of values. Int array contains one through six. Filled int array contains a different number of elements that are all sevens. And so when we perform the comparison here, we see that they are not equal. Finally, we take a look at the arrays method binary search, which works on a sorted array of values to figure out where a particular key that you're searching for is located. Binary search returns either a negative value if in fact the uh, value you're searching for is not found. Otherwise, it returns the index number of that value within the sorted array. So arrays.binary search is being called here at line 40 on the int array, which is sorted with the values from one through six in it. And we're searching for the value five. So uh, it's going to check to see if the location is greater than or equal to zero. If it is, it will say where we found the element. Otherwise, it'll say that the element was not found. And you can see that we found the value five at element number four in the int array. And then finally, we show you a binary search for which uh, we search for a value that's not in the array just to show you that it prints out that the value was not there. So these are just a, a number of common array manipulations. So anytime you need to perform a manipulation of an array, you may want to first take a look at the arrays class to see the methods that are there. And hopefully you'll find what you need rather than having to create your own array manipulations from scratch.